Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where we all know the Amiga was a great gaming machine, but there were a few genres it wasn't all that suited for, but that didn't stop the developers from trying. So let's check out when the Amiga tried to do the first person shooter. For this list we're going to be looking at Amiga first or exclusive games. So ports are out as I want to show off what the Amiga devs could really do. And this is just a few of the many games that were released. And these are ones that I have played in the past. So let's check them out roughly moving from the least to the most advanced. Which means we have to go back to the Amiga 500 and its game Death Mask. Now this was developed by Apache and was published by Alternative in 1995. And this was their first proper project, having only done ports before this. The first thing that you'll notice is that you're actually playing with half the screen, as this is a game that was designed around two player action. Which is quite surprising when most of the games will struggle to draw even a single player. The reason for this is that really, it's just a modified dungeon crawler. As you don't freely move around, instead you rotate at set angles and move in large steps. It's a bit of a difficult one to really call an FPS, but it does share all those gameplay features from the genre, even if its technology was significantly old at this point. And because of this, this game can be quite clunky to play as well, as you can't easily move out the way of attacks, so most of the time you just have to sit there and tank it and hope that you'll kill them first. Thankfully, there is a range of weapons that will make taking them down much quicker. But you start each level with that basic gun, and you have to recollect them all in the level. All while either just heading for the exit, or having to do some objective, like destroy something, and then you can find your way to the exit. Which you'd think wouldn't be too hard, but these exits don't have any special textures to indicate it. You just walk down a dead end and it goes, hey, you've completed it. Now this was one of the earlier shooters that showed up on the Amiga. And so for a while it was absolutely everywhere. And I think mostly because it's one of those games that look great in screenshots. But in motion, well at least the amount of motion that it has, it's not that good. Which leads us on to our second game, again for the Amiga 500, it's Behind the Iron Gate. Now this was released in 1995, but developed by Ego and published by Black Legend. Similar to the last game, this was also this company's first title. But what will stand out from the very start, is that this isn't the most colourful or detailed looking shooter you're ever going to see. But what that simplified colour palette has resulted in is something that moves far more smoothly. And it does have those odd textures that you can find on the walls or props that are hanging from the sides. The top half of the screen is where all the action takes place, and depending on your control method, you should be able to aim at a baddie independently of the direction you're moving in, which can be a little confusing at first. The bottom of the screen is where we can see the inventory system, which is where we'll hold all our weapons, ammo and various other items like keys. As you have two hands you can move weapons and items into them and then select what is currently active. So you can dual wield weapons if you want to, though you can only use one of them at a time. On top of that you also have to manually reload the guns when they run out, which isn't the fastest thing when you're in the middle of combat. And while the levels look more like a simplified Wolfenstein, the gameplay is a little bit closer to Doom, as you have to interact with doors, keys, as well as switches. As you move around these maze-like levels, picking up items from the floor, all while shooting quite nicely rendered out baddies. 
with what is quite the range of guns. There is even armour upgrades that you have to place into the right slots if you want to use them. I feel that this tends to get a little overlooked due to its limited colour palette. It's not a perfect shooter but it is surprisingly well done for the hardware that it was running on. Gloom is where we get to straddle the Amiga 500 and the A1200, as the first release was AGA only, but the Deluxe Edition changed this so you could run it on an A500 if it just happened to have 2MB of RAM and was upgraded to a 6820 CPU, which um, to be honest I don't think was all that common. Development duties were handled by Blackmagic with Guildhall Publishing. And this was also released in 1995. At this point we might as well name 95 as the year of the Doom clone. And the developer went on to make, well, more Gloom games. This is easily the most advanced looking game so far, with it being fully textured map and having some fancy features like translucent textures, to so having walls that are angled and animated so they can move and spin all while you're able to freely move around the environment, but it is still limited with its height. So even if it can do some creative things with its level design, its gameplay is still rooted in those older May shooters like Wolfenstein 3D. The game does throw a whole range of baddies at you, and in some quite decent numbers as well, and if you've got the option enabled they all give up in amazing fashion. Now depending on which version of the game you play, Gloom or Gloom Deluxe, you may or may not have a visible weapon. But you do get the same guns, it's just that they are all variations of each other, with the looks of the bullets changing to let you know what you're currently using. Now unlike other games in the genre, you don't get to freely change between which weapon you're currently using, as each new weapon is a replacement for the last. Now staying on a single weapon for a while could be quite boring, so to get around this there's an upgrade system in place. There are these bouncing icons that the first time you collect one will change your gun, with all other collections upgrading the firepower and speed of the gun. And it even gets a limited overcharge mode, which gives you double bullets for a little while. On top of all that you also have unlimited ammo so you can just go crazy with it. The health pickups are provided by what I can only guess is a baby bottle. Did Chuck Rock 2 sneak into this game while I wasn't looking? So it does feel a little bit weird in places. Now this wasn't the most advanced shooter on the Amiga, but it was quite popular, which I put down to it running quite smoothly on relatively low hardware. But if you did have a CPU upgrade, you could raise the resolution and get it to look absolutely amazing. And this is also one of the few games that ended up being modded, and actually got quite the range of maps as well, including a remake of one of the earlier games. that gloom brings out the fears in us, which is another game for the Amiga 1200. This one was made by Bomb, and had a few publishers including Guildhall and Mank. And surprise surprise, it was also released in 1995. And keep that shocked expression on your face as this was also this developer's first and only game series. By this point in the list we're starting to see games that are getting closer to Doom in their tech. 
as this game has variable heights in its levels. But the view distance has suffered quite a bit to make this run smoothly, which on a relatively stock machine isn't amazing, but it doesn't take much to bring it up to a decent speed. As with some of the previous games, this also has options for tweaking the graphics, with scaling and turning off some of the features being the big ones, but it also has this dithered mode, which I've not yet decided if it's meant to improve things or not, as I think it makes it look a little worse but I don't think it's actually improved the render times any. All the monsters tend to be quite bright and visually interesting, even if they are very weird. The reason for this was to make them really stand out against the backgrounds, which they definitely do. Well that's when you can actually see them with that limited draw distance obviously. But these things also have a very limited number of frames, and will always be looking at you. Which feeds into the very aggressive behaviour that they have. As they will often start shooting at you before you've even spotted them. Which includes being half covered by doors and walls. As they will be waiting to shoot you as soon as that door is open enough for them to do so. They do have a nice death sprite, but it's not really animated. It's just there to make sure that you know it's dead and there was a baddie there earlier. Now this also continues to your weapons, as that shotgun doesn't really even move. It's just two small flames that come out to show you that you're doing something with it. I call it a shotgun, but both the HUD and the manual labels it as a rifle. And looking at the HUD, we can also see that our max health tops out at 99 which is also the same for our ammo. And this is a game you really don't want to run out of ammo, as while you have a knife you will have to run through a barrage of fire to try and stick that in, as there's no sneaking up on enemies here, and they will absolutely hammer on you as soon as they spot you. The HUD also shows the number of lives we have, as this has a life system, where you have to collect these 1-ups in the level. So you better be careful and on the lookout for extra ones if you want to get anywhere in this game. As it is brutally hard in places. There's also something else that's quite cool, a built-in level editor. I've not really gotten to grips with it so far, so I can't really show much of it off. But it is quite nice that it's right there on the main menu. As I've done a full video on Alien Breed 3D before, there'll be a link in the description, let's instead check out its follow up, Alien Breed 3D 2 The Killing Grounds, which was made by Team 17 and published by Ocean in 1995, wait no, 96? I guess Alien Breed 3D 1 was that 95 game, and this being Team 17 I think we know that this wasn't their first or their last game. And what we find here is that very impressive engine from the first game, but kicked up a few notches. And what that means is even an Amiga 1200 running at double speed results in quite the slideshow. I think we can actually count the number of frames as they draw. So this is really the first game that we've played that you really should be running on a massively upgraded Amiga. Like my Amiga 4000 with its 6830 CPU running at 40 megahertz. That finally gives us the resources to run this nicely. Though it does slow down a little bit when we increase the size of the screen. But once we got that running, we can see that this game has far more textures than that first title. And there might actually be more textures in the first two rooms than almost the entirety of Alien Breed 3D. 
And what's also quite interesting is that the guns seem to be real 3D models. And if they're not, they're very detailed sprite work. Far more detailed than the rest of the sprites in the game anyway. Which we see from the first baddie we come across, the Red Beast from the original game, which looks almost identical to its previous incarnation. Though there might be a few more frames of animation going on. I guess reusing baddies worked for Doom 1 and 2, so it's fine here as well. Alien Breed 3D and Alien Breed 3D 2 was where we started to see that corridor shooter style gameplay come back. We have keys, switches, doors, and even water. Though some of those things weren't around in the earlier levels for the sequel. But what we did get is a whole bunch of very fancy lighting effects. And just look at these lights with the coronas and the rays going on. They look amazing. But the first few levels are you moving around this spaceship, so it's mostly metal corridors, which isn't the most interesting of environments. As you have to keep opening blast doors and trying to take on quite a large number of baddies. Thankfully the health system is quite cool, as you aren't limited to 100 health points. I'm not even sure what the max health is. There's also an auto map feature, so you can just hit tab to see where you currently are. But it does have one weird design choice, and that is when you get hit, you get pushed around. Which makes running away from baddies harder than it needs to be, and can even make hitting them quite difficult, particularly if you get an attack from multiple directions. And for a good number of years, this is probably the most advanced original FPS game on the Amiga. And then, in 1998, Vulcan Software released Genetic Species. A game that really has to be seen to be believed that it's running on an Amiga. And well, it doesn't do all that great on a stock Amiga 1200, but it does do much better if you have a lot of upgrades or an Amiga 4000. As it supports all of the fancy upgrades. Got a retargetable graphics card? Then you can get 16 or 24 bit colour. Got a replacement sound card? Then more channels of audio can be used. Got a faster CPU and lots of RAM? Well, frankly, it will use all of those as well. And it will look absolutely amazing in action. This game has all sorts of fancy lighting and texture effects going on. Though I'm not 100% sure this is a fully 3D engine so I don't recall seeing any difference in the height. That might come on some of the later levels that I've not gotten to, so if I'm wrong, let me know. Now I've never personally got too far into this game, so I can't really give you too much of a description of it. But one thing that does seem to set it apart from all the other games on this list is that you aren't just completing a level, then moving on. Instead, you're traveling around this world, moving back and forth between levels to try and find the various keys and upgrades. So it's far more in keeping with its contemporaries like Quake 2 and Half-Life in this regard. And I just love having these huge explosions that you can set off, to then walking through a corridor with water dripping down from the ceiling because there's a fire going on. It really is a quite fun and interesting game and one I definitely have to go back to and play more of. And to wrap this up, I also have to give a special mention to a brand new game called Dread. As this is designed for both the Amiga and Atari ST, and not for those massively upgraded Amigas, 
This is going for a stock Amiga 500. And what they pulled off is very impressive. It feels smoother than some of those AGA games that we've seen, and looks better than some of them as well. Well, that is until you get quite close up to some of the walls, and then you see some of the tricks that they've been doing to try and speed it up on those textures. So far, there is just a single level that has a few baddie types and three guns, or at least I've found two upgrades so far. And outside of a few of the walls, there aren't really much variation in the heights. But with it being in such an early state, I am very impressed with what they've managed to do so far. And look at this, an animated sky. And they've even made sure to make the controls as modern as possible, so you can use Wasad and a mouse as the default layout. So I hope you've enjoyed this small list of Amiga FPS games. It's not everything that was released, but it is those that I've put a little bit of time into. And if there was one that I didn't cover that you think I should, then just let me know down in the comments, as I'd enjoy doing a follow-up video on any suggestions that you might have. So I think it's fair to say that while some of these games might have technically been more advanced than Doom, gameplay wise I don't think they hit the mark. So until next time, I've been the Goldfish, that was a lot of shooting, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.